I'm an East Coast man, but murder has no fixed address. In my racket, you go where you're needed. And right now, I needed to pack. Do you have your plane ticket? Yeah. Your car reservation? Nick said he made them. All right, here is your shaving kit, your toothbrush. Did you pack your bullets? Got them. Anything else? Yeah, check with my landlord, find out when my new apartment's gonna be ready, and, uh, when... oh, call Maury, tell him I'll pay him in a couple of weeks. Who's Maury? My new bookie. What happened to Phil? Phil's gonna be busy for a couple of years. Bye, Don. I'll see you when I see you. All righty. Hey, Mike, aren't you gonna watch this? I've already seen it. I'm late to the airport. We'll bring you back a souvenir. Something in blonde? Female? I'll make a note. Have a nice flight. Call us when you hit the ground. I prefer landing. You got everything, right? Everything. Don't forget to feed the fish. Adios. Mike? Your plane ticket? Finally. Now I can get some work done. Me too. You call that work? Hey, this is Mike's client. We gotta know what she looks like. Right. Ah, oh, yeah. Sharon Diamond was a local girl who fled to L.A. with dreams of palm trees and golden statuettes. She was a cute kid when I knew her, a schoolgirl who raised herself. With parents so busy working, they never knew that what she really needed was their love. Now she sought anonymous love, the adulation of movie fans. Sharon got her palm trees, that was easy. But her B-movie queen resume would dry up with the first wrinkle. And she'd work only as long as her body made grown men drive on sidewalks. I hadn't seen her in years, but when the phone rang and she asked me to help her beat a murder rap, no wasn't in my script. A lot of people look down on L.A., but I'm not one of them. From what I've seen of the place, the view's all right. But take away the sand and surf and sunshine, and it's just another city with a killer on the loose. I was coming late to the party, but I couldn't turn down Sharon Diamond's invitation to help. Hi. I have a reservation. My camera? How did you know? You're our last booking. Oh. So what have you got for me? Um, we only have one car left. Hope you're thinking topless. I am now. I was working on no sleep, a stomach full of airline food and driving a car I wouldn't wish on an enemy. But at least I was here ready to ask the questions and get some answers, like who killed movie producer Don Reynolds? And why did they want Sharon Diamond to take the rap? It wasn't much to go on, but at least it was a place to start. I hear they're building a subway in LA. When it's finished, I'm gonna be the first in line.
my camera? Yeah? Howard Oring. Sharon Diamond's attorney. Welcome to California. Oh, nice to meet you. Thanks. Uh, how's she doing? When was the last time you saw her? It's been a few years. Don't be surprised. She's changed. Hello, Mike. How are you doing, kid? How are they treating you? Well, it is not the Ritz. Thanks for coming. It's great to see you. God, this is almost as embarrassing as my last movie. Your last movie made three million dollars in Thailand alone. Good morning, Howard. Cheerful as always, I see. Hang in there. We're gonna get you out of here just as soon as it's possible. Detective Martinez. Counselor. And who are you? Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator out of New York. I'm a friend of Sharon's. Are you carrying Hammer? I checked my piece at the cappuccino bar. All right, boys and girls, I just got off the phone with the DA's office. He wants me to find out if you're willing to sign a statement. What kind of statement? The DA's agreed to plea her down to a second-degree murder. But what if I didn't do it? Sharon, it's 12 to 20 years if you sign. You'll get out and still have a chance to make a life for yourself. You stand trial, and you'll never get out of jail again. Look it over. I'll give you some time to think about it. The only good thing about any of this is that my parents aren't alive to see it. So what should I do, Mike? I don't think you should sign anything until we know what happened. Don't you agree? But it couldn't hurt to wait. All right. Let's go back over what did happen the night Don died. Well, according to the cops, uh, I had sex with my boyfriend. I stabbed him in the back with a knife, then blacked out. Did you do it? I don't know. I can't remember. Were you on anything? Apparently, I was on Dawn. Sharon, we're going to lead a lot more than I can't remember if we're going to get you out of this. What was the last thing you do remember? Um, I was at the party downstairs. Then all I remember is waking up, the blood everywhere, and Dawn laying there dead. But I don't believe I did it. I mean, I couldn't have. Why would I? So, anybody need a pen? Save your ink. She's not signing anything. You know, I've got 20 witnesses who found your client laying over the body of the victim, her lover, with the murder weapon in her hand, and the victim's blood all over her dress. But nobody saw me do it. Ease up. I'd like to speak to my client alone. Fine. The offer's on the table for 24 hours. I wasn't sure if Sharon's seeming lack of emotion was from shock or cynicism, but that was just one of a million things I still didn't know about this case. I want you to know that it took every favor I had to get the DA to reduce that charge to second-degree murder. I, I don't believe we ought to test his patience. Look, you want out, we'll get a new attorney. Nobody said anything about wanting out. Now, please. Don't tell me that you believe her. I've seen her movies. She's not that good an actress. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Candace. Candace James. Meet Mike Hammer. Oh, yeah. You're Sharon's PI friend. She told me you were coming. Are you a friend of Sharon? Yeah, we met on a film a couple years ago. Oh, I gotta run. I'm late. I don't want Sharon to think I'm not gonna be there for her. Nice to meet you, Candace. Same here. That girl could be a big star. Why isn't she? She just hasn't found the right vehicle. Neither of you. Sharon's dead ex, Don Reynolds, produced low-budget flicks for a shoestring studio called Galaxy Pictures. Their latest gem was called False Truths. But a false truth is just a lie with a fancy name. I needed the truth. I was hoping Don's partner, Kate Wilton, would help. Hi. Any part in that script for me? Only if you do nudity. My name is Mike Hammer. I'm a private investigator. I'm here to see Kate Wilton. Kate's very busy. 
but maybe I can squeeze you in. Oh, thanks, Sunshine. Close. It's Sky. Look, Danny, I just saw your latest cut of false truths, and there's not nearly enough gore. I saw guava juice, Danny. I want to see blood spurting. This is unrated, not the family hour. Who's this? My camera. He's a private investigator. I already hired one. He's working for Sharon Diamond. Oh. Have a seat. Thanks. Excuse me, but why do you need a private investigator? Sharon's no good to me in jail. We've got another picture starting in two weeks. I've got to find something to help her lawyer get her out. Any luck? No. What can you tell me about Don Reynolds? He's dead. Yeah. But you were his partner, weren't you? No. He had a production deal with this studio. The man could do two things. Package cheap martial arts films and make enemies. Like who? Pick up the phone book. Is your number listed? You think I'm a suspect? That's too bad. We gotten off to such a good start. Yeah, it's been the highlight of my trip so far. So you have an alibi. As a matter of fact, I do. I was on a movie set in North Carolina the night Don was killed. I've already gone through this with the police. Stephen James on line two. Wanna see a murder? I'm about to kill an agent. It'll take more than a phone call. Thanks, I'll be in touch. Steve, how are you? Great to hear from you. Have you lost all touch with reality? You're lucky I'm hiring your client to begin with. Do I detect a cloud in the sky? It's nothing, Mr. Hammer. You like your job? It's OK. How long have you been working for Kate Wilbur? Long enough. Listen, um, you got anything you want to tell me, I brought him. Anything at all. That's my number. Stop number three on my West Coast itinerary took me to the crime scene. Don Reynolds' rented crib. A $9,500 a month changing room with 3,000 miles of sushi right outside his door. Welcome Matt was at the dry cleaners and the host had already greeted his final guest. So I had to make myself at home. Good thing I remembered to pack an extra set of keys. The smell of cigars and perfume and murder is still hung in the air. Keys. That's exactly what I needed to clear Sharon. A key. A key that would lead me to the killer. But I wasn't home alone. The party was over for Sharon's ex, Don Reynolds, and neither time nor evidence was on Sharon's side. Everyone knows an uninvited guest can ruin a party, and I had a gate crasher on my hands. <laughs> my camera. I don't believe it. Johnny P, what the hell are you doing here? I'd ask you the same thing. Well, you know how much I love sun surf and palm trees. 
Actually, I got a call from Sharon Diamond. She said she was in trouble. She needed my help. Yeah. What she needs is an alibi. You think she did it? Maybe. Sharon and Don, they used to go at it pretty good. Check with the cops. They got a phone book full of domestic disturbance calls. Well, what's unusual about that? I remember when you were married to Doris, the cops spent more time at your house than you did. Hey, I never laid a hand on Doris. But I can tell you this, Don slept Sharon around pretty good. So how's the old neighborhood? It improved after you left. <laughs> you haven't. You actually like it out here? What's not to like? The weather's fine. The women are finer. You stay out of the rat race, L.A.'s the fountain of youth. Yeah, if you can afford the silicone. I figured these were Reynolds wheels. Yeah. And I figure these are your wheels. <laughs> you know, they pay big bucks for discretion. Like, you ought to give the City of Angels a try. No, I don't think so. Raymond Chandler and Philip Marlowe have already got it covered. <laughs> to each his own. Johnny Palmieri was a fast talker with a face like an unmade bed. Just another refugee from back east, sick of the snow, the rain, the mets, and the pigeons. He'd gone west to soak up the sun, and he hoped a few daughters. I had an early call with my client the next day at the county lockup, but I couldn't sleep. So I hit the town, L.A. at night, a great cure for insomnia. I was well rested by the time I saw Sharon. The DA won't give us any more time. We're lucky he gave us what he did. I've been on the phone with him all night. We've got till noon to sign the confession. Well, that gives us almost four hours. Fine. But at 12.01, he pulls the offer. So, if you tell excuse me, I'm going to give the DA a call again. There's got to be a way to buy a little more time. Where'd you find him? Howard was one of the first guys I met when I came out here. He helped get me started. He introduced me to Don. Sharon. Were you in love with Don? Yeah, at first I was. But then everything became confused. In the end, it was like more about business. He uh, used you? I guess I let him. And I've been under a lot of pressure, you know? Yeah, I know. Hey. I don't believe it did it. I can tell you this. I am going to find whoever killed Don, and I will have you out of here and back on the beach in no time. <laughs> Mike, I hate the beach. <laughs> Why? The sun, it kills my skin. Well, how come you look so tan? Uh, I take tanning pills. And the second your skin looks like leather, your career is over. So. I get the look without killing my skin. You certainly do. You look gorgeous. All right, I'll tell you what. When I get you out of here, I'll take you to a movie. At least it's dark in there. <laughs> OK. <laughs> as long as it's not one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really understood actors. I guess we all imagine being someone else. Sharon Diamond did it for a living every day. Now she was lost. The Sharon Diamond I'd known as a little girl was now a diamond in the rough. Step out of the car, please. What's the problem, officer? Look, I know I wasn't speeding. This car shimmies over 30. Step out of the car. So what was I doing? You're weaving back and forth across the road. Hey, and this baby, I'm lucky I wasn't in the ocean. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You make it easy on yourself. Why don't you run home like a good little boy while you still got legs? You listening to him, Hammer? Huh? You listening to him? Look at me. Bang.
right, fine, I copy. I copy. What did he look like? I checked with my dispatcher. No units were within five miles of here. Well, to protect and serve was splashed all over the door. To protect and serve is LAPD's motto. We're L.A. County Sheriff. Doesn't matter. I don't think they were real cops. Hey, well, they may not have been, but those sure as hell are real bruises. You want me to call you an ambulance? No, thanks. There's no time. I'm pushing somebody's buttons, and my client is running out of options. You don't have a client anymore, Mike. What are you talking about? Sharon Diamond signed the murder confession 30 minutes ago. What? The pen is mightier than the sword. And the pen Sharon Diamond used had killed whatever chances I had to keep her out of prison. Look, what choice did I have? You should have talked to me first. OK, let's play this scene out. B-movie actress goes up on the stand and pleads, please believe me, Mr. and Mrs. Juror, but I just can't remember killing my boyfriend because I was on drugs. You would have to stand in line to buy a ticket to my execution. All I'm saying is you could have waited. <sighs> Look, Mike. Howard told me about what happened to you. Maybe it's not such a bad idea if you head back to New York. Hey, I am not giving up on this thing. I am not quitting. Why are you? You getting killed isn't going to get me out of here. Please go home, Mike. I'm ready. I had a confession of my own. At this point, I had serious doubts about my client. I was back to square one. So what the hell do you think I'm going to pull out of here? A rabbit, I don't know. Humor me. Right. Let's see what we got. One four-inch blade used as the murder weapon. Mm -hmm. One wallet belonging to the deceased. One diamond ring belonging to the deceased. One long lady summer dress worn by the suspect. The deceased is blood. Type A covers the dress. Let me see. It's coconut oil. Lab found traces of suntan lotion. Sharon Diamond did not kill Don Reynolds. Where are you getting this, from suntan oil? She used pills to get her tan. What else you got in your box of tricks? One gold necklace with some kind of pendant on it. Detective Martinez? This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I wasn't having any luck with Sharon Diamond's enemies, so I figured it was time to try her friends. I started with Candace, who had already started. I'd buy you a drink, but it looks like somebody beat me to it. Hmm. There's always room for one more. What do you have? She's having what I'm having. Well, if I remember correctly, cheap scotch. <laughs> He's lying, though. Bourbon. Best stuff, straight up. Hey, what happened to you? Oh, I think this is bad. You ought to see the club the guy hit me with. What the hell are you doing here? Trying to keep you from stealing my girl? Your girl? <sighs> let's, uh, let's move to a table, though. You two just meet? Yesterday, outside the jail. Mike is Sharon's knight in shining armor. <laughs> Best of luck. A little early in the day to be knocking him back, huh, Candace? It's too late in the day for me. So how do you two know each other? Well, we used to work together on the streets of New York. He lies. I worked. He took dirty pictures of husbands in compromising positions. Mikey's jealous. Here I am out in L.A. making it big, and 
He's stuck in that rat hole of a New York City office. Yeah, I'm so jealous I can barely sleep at night. Candace, can you help me out? Sure, anything. Why would a beautiful girl like Sharon Diamond put up with the crap Don Reynolds dished out? <laughs> Why does any actress put up with the garbage they do? They got no power. And if you don't have power, you sleep with power. The key scenes from Sharon's drama were stuck in my head like the sour notes of a song you hate, but that everybody's whistling. Did she kill her boyfriend, the producer Don Reynolds? She said she couldn't remember. Maybe that was just an act. But if Sharon didn't kill him, then who did? It was a script without an ending. I decided to write my own with Candace cast in the lead, so I went to the marina and the boat Candace called home. A 38-foot waterbed with a million-dollar view. Candace! 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 Finally, something in this case fit together. The other half of Sharon's necklace. But where was Candace? Candace James was dead. She once slept with power. Now she was sleeping with the fishes. I had to break the news to Sharon. You don't give up, do you? It's all in my personal services contract. You should have read the fine print. Go home, Mike. Candace James is dead, Sharon. The cops say she got drunk. She fell off a boat and hit her head on the dock. But I don't think so. I think she was murdered. You recognize this? Where did you get that? I found it on the boat. You and Candace were lovers, weren't you? My guess is Don didn't want to share. Come on, Sharon, I'm running out of patience. Unless you want to die, now is the time to talk. When Don first found out, he beat me, and I left. Then he threatened to out me to the press for being bisexual. I was forced to break it off with Candace. She wasn't happy. But you still wore the heart. Leaving her was a business decision. I'm not proud of it. I thought everybody slept with everybody in Hollywood. <laughs> not actresses trying to make the big leap from sleaze to A pictures. Don swore he'd go to the press if I ever left him. Well, why didn't you tell me this before? Because I didn't want anybody to know. Sharon, I told you I know you didn't do it. But I bet Candace knew who did. Are you playing this hunch just because we're old friends? Not a chance. I'm playing all the angles no matter what. I'm gonna have you out of here and back on the set in no time. So you don't hate me? Are you kidding? I'm a charter member of your fan club, sweetheart. <laughs> My chat with Sharon gave her a fresh attitude. And now all I needed was a fresh shirt. So I dropped by my hotel, a place the size of Delaware, for a change of clothes and a new bandage over my eye. I was lucky I did, because I got a surprise visit. Talk about room service. Mr. Hammer? Sky. Come on in. How's it going? Good. Can I get you something? No, thanks. Everything all right down at Redmond Pool? Kate Wilton treating you okay? Pretty good. So now. So, what's up? You know, Hollywood's a company town. Loyalty is everything. 
Especially when you're an assistant. You hear things, you see things. They expect you to keep it to yourself. I'm listening. But at some point, you just have to do what's right, don't you? Yeah, you do. Kate purchased the ticket, but she never got on the flight to North Carolina. How do you know? The ticket was never used. Do you know where she was the night Don died? No, but I do know where I was. I saw Don in bed that night. With Sharon? I never saw her face, but she was blonde. Well, that lets your boss off the hook. She's a brunette. Today, she changes her hair all the time. Really? Look, I've probably told you more than I should. Well, I appreciate your honesty, sweetheart. You're in a class by yourself. Thanks, Mr. Hammer. There we go. Sunny skies. You wanted to see me, Mike? Your boss has really got some problems, Johnny. Everybody does, including you. What does that mean? It means that Kate Wilton's alibi has been blown out of the water. So what's that got to do with me? Try double murder, pal. Screw you, Hammer. You're out of your mind. People working for her, Johnny. She pays most of your bills. My guess is she had you kill Don Reynolds. You know I ought to plug you for saying that right now. Yeah, the same way you plugged your girlfriend, Candace. Hammer, I don't need this crap. Whether you need it or not, you're gonna get it. You better stay close, pal. I have the hottest car in L.A. Mike! 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 You okay? You're fine okay. Oh, no. well, I figure this takes me off your list. No, but it sure moves you down a couple notches. My client? She stays right where she is. <laughs> Good grief. I hope you check the third box on the damage waiver. You know, Johnny, I think she looks a lot better the way she is. <laughs> With my wheels out of commission, I went back to Galaxy Pictures to see a gal about a horse. Mr. Hammer, what can I do for you? You lied to me. About what? You bought an airline ticket to North Carolina, but you were never on the plane. I don't have time for this. You'll have plenty of time, sweetheart. We're talking about 25 to life for murder. <sighs> All right, Mr. Hammer, I lied to you. Why? My contract was up with Redmond Pool, and I've been in talks with other studios, real studios. I needed an excuse to be out of the office to meet with them. And if Redmond Poole found out... I'd be canned for breach of contract, and no one would touch me. All right, Miss Wilton, I want the truth. Where were you the night that Don was killed? I was at Howard's house working on a deal memo. Candace was there, too. Well, unfortunately, Candace isn't around to confirm that. What was Candace's relationship to Howard? Ask Howard. What time did you leave his house? I don't know, maybe 8 o'clock. The murder took place around midnight. Where were you between 8 and 12? I didn't kill Don Reynolds, Mr. Hammer. You're wasting my time. And yours. I might not be good with names, but I never forget a fist. Let's check it out so it's ready for this afternoon. All right. Yeah, that'll hold fine. That's great. Good.
Kate Wilton hire you to play policeman come after me? It wasn't her. Who was it then? Screw you. Oh, yeah? There's a thin wire separating you from life and death, pal. Uh, I'm gonna count to one. Uh, one? Uh, uh, one? Palmer, he's easy. It was Howard Ory hired me. Howard Ory. Thanks. Hang in there. Hey! 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 Howard Ory was a slick lawyer who was about to need a slicker lawyer. No, look, look. I, I can't make those numbers work. I've got a million dollars on the table, and that's just be it's before the back end even... You've got some nerve. Sit down, pal. It's time for you to audition for your confession. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a new movie, a love story gone wrong, starring you, a scum-sucking lawyer. Get out of here before I call the cops. A lawyer who falls in love with a hot dame. When the dame wants nothing to do with him, he kills her man and then frames her for the crime. I found Sharon, you know. When I met her, she was nothing. I gave her new lips, I gave her new hair. I even gave her her first 8 by 10 headshot. And then you railroaded her into an 8 by 10 prison cell. It was almost the perfect plan. But where you outsmarted yourself was with Candace. They were two halves of the same hole. You drug Sharon to set her up for murder, and then put Candace in her dress. Candace went along with it, because just like you, she was a spurned lover. But the dress turned out to be a mistake. You wanted Don's blood on it to frame Sharon, but you got something else on it, too. Sharon hates the sun, but Candace loved it. You were afraid she was gonna crack and tell her story. So you killed her. Sharon didn't sleep with Don that night. It was Candace. But she didn't kill him. You did. Surely there's some deal to be negotiated here, some financial arrangement we can make. Showbiz. I was home, back in the bosom of the city I love. Welcome home. What took you so long? I had a little trouble at the airport. What happened? Oh, they wouldn't let me take Betsy on the plane, so they said pack it in my suitcase. A luggage handler dropped it and nearly killed the sky cap. Saved you the tip. Where's Nick? Yeah, I want you to wear those black stockings and that lace thing I like. Yeah, wear some heels, too. I gotta go, Mom. Bet you're looking forward to Mother's Day. I forgot to tell you, I got a strange call from an agent. He wants to buy the rights to the Sharon Diamond case and make a my camera movie. Absolutely not. They're offering $10,000. I'm not interested. OK. We got the bill for the car. How much? $10,000. Call the agent, tell him I'll do lunch. Sharon Diamond was free, free to start over, free to create a new life, a better life than she had ever known. We don't always get a second take. I sure hope Sharon doesn't blow hers. As for me, I was jet-lagged and sore, and I should have called it a day. But as Mayor Walker once said, a civilized man never goes to bed on the same day he wakes up. New York lives at night, and there's plenty of time to sleep when you're dead. Mm-hmm.